the Fortress of Solitude, the Batcave, Avengers Tower, that weird bungalow in Mexico where the Hulks did their training. Having a good headquarters is critical to the success of any good superhero or supervillain. In today's video, we're exploring the essential elements of base design that can help you create a kick-butt secret base for your original characters, or at least so that you can appreciate and critique the bases that other people make. Hello, super friends, and welcome back to another episode of Superhero Saturday, where we talk about the arts of superheroes, storytelling, and so much more. My name is Annie, and like any other good super fan, I would love to be able to tour and explore some of the really cool headquarter designs of some of my favorite characters. But it seems to me that some uh, creative storytellers out there seem to make really cool designs that gloss over a few really important rooms and uh, facilities that one might need in a secret base. For those of you out there who are creative types like me and might be designing some kind of secret base or headquarters or supervillain layer for the characters in your own superhero fiction story, uh, I wanted to give you guys a comprehensive look at the five-step system that I use for designing some kind of base that won't leave your audience wondering and will probably look pretty cool doing it. The first thing to consider before designing any type of building for your characters is to consider the aim of the building. That is, what is the purpose behind its use? What is it for? What is it designed to do? This is going to frame your whole design because at every step of the process, you wanna keep in mind that everything in this is designed to do something in particular, whether it's just to look cool or if it's to, you know, maintain their little hidden base so they can continue saving the world or trying to take it over. Is this headquarters secret or public or both? Does your character need a high-tech cutting edge lab or do they really just need a space where they can train? What is their overall main mission in your story and how will having this base help them accomplish it. With that in mind, let's move on to step number two, which is to figure out the areas that will be present in your base. In order to really have like a fully thought out, you know, all inclusive type of base, there are really five different types of areas that should be present in your base pretty much universally. The first is basic human utilities, like survival things, having a bathroom, a kitchen so that your character can eat, a rest area, somewhere to lay down or sit down and chillax in the transition, and most importantly, somewhere where they can apply first aid. You know, a lot of superheroes and supervillains tend to get in a scuffle or two on the regular, so where do they store all of their things that they use to patch themselves up when they don't need to actually go to the hospital and seek real medical attention? There should be at least some drawer somewhere with a box full of band-aids. The next type of area is what I'm calling operations. And this is, again, with a focus on the character's mission, is going to be an area that helps your character accomplish whatever goals they're seeking. So if that's like a conference room or a computer room or some kind of hub where they can put things together, an experimentation lab so they can come up with some kind of cool chemicals, whatever is unique to your characters and what is going to be a space where they can, you know, continue to progress on their, you know, main journey, there needs to be a space for that. So this is an area that needs to be in your base. The third area I'm calling loosely garage. And by this, I mean somewhere to house, you know, potential transportation or like a workshop or somewhere that they can just maintain whatever tools and gear that they usually use. That's kind of the garage of your space. Another area that might be important is some kind of training area. If your character has superpowers, there might be a really cool space that you can use so that they can train with and without their superpowers against opponents that um, maybe don't have as high stakes, by which I mean like robot drones or something instead of actual living, breathing human beings. Maybe there's just a regular plain old gym where they can work out or a shooting range where they can do target practice. Anything that might be used to hone those skills that are required for the job of superheroing or supervillaining 
might be a really good thing to have in your base. The last category I have in this areas thing is just kind of general like theme rooms slash museum rooms. This seems to be a common theme like if you're using a space for any length of time sometimes you'll want to end up putting your own little personal touches on it. So for some reason a lot of heroes and villains tend to have collections of like things that they've gathered from different types of missions, different heroes or villains they've defeated, different things that they've done. So having some kind of like little museum, even if it's just like a scrapbook wall might be kind of cool. Or if there's some kind of like tech savvy person or cyborg or android, maybe a place where they can recharge, you know, their implants or something like that. Or even just if it's a secret base, having some kind of secret entrance and exit way that is really cool and on theme for your character. Whatever you can come up with, it's really in line with your personal style and your character's design can be really cool to have in a base rather than just, you know, a gym with a conference room attached to it. Hello, you are going to make a cat meow. A purr, 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 a purr, purr, purr. I'm not going to kiss you because you'll have red lipstick on your fur. Cal says hi to all of the super friends out there and he's going to go outside now. All right, so now that you've got kind of the brainstorm of what types of areas and, and rooms and things you might have in your base, let's talk about the next element, which is access. First off, of course, the exits and entrances, all the egress points, are they secret or are they, you know, kind of more like there's a, there's a sign over the door that says superhero entrance here, but also just kind of like all of that thing about access. Who is going to have access to this headquarters? If your character uses this space more as a uh, public relations type of area, then there might be a little bit more of a public edge to it, something that makes it really visible to the public. But if it's more of a secret base, then how are those secrets going to be maintained? Are there a certain number of people who already know about the secret base? Hint, if they didn't build it themselves, and there's probably architects and designers and contractors out there who know at least a little bit of what's going on. And most importantly, if this is a mostly secret base, then uh, how does your character go about keeping that place a secret? How do they keep unauthorized people from gaining access and gaining knowledge of the base itself? This can be a really fun way to think about a base because you can come up with cool like entrance behind the waterfall type things or uh, gotta play a certain series of notes on the piano to get in and all of those kind of things. Step number four is a little bit less fun, uh, but I promise it can be if you give it a little bit of thought and that is action. By that I mean, how does your character acquire this base? What is required to maintain it? And what is required in just general everyday operation? This is kind of the do your chores section of base maintenance, but I promise it's an essential element of base design. If this base is like powered, what kind of uh, electricity and plumbing bills are required for this? Or um, what kind of internet service do you have down in the bat cave? Or, uh, you know, who's cleaning up? Does your character have an Alfred who just has to clean the bat cave every single day? Or is there like an army of Roombas just zooming around, you know, picking up every last little Cheerio lying on the ground. Do people ask about this, uh, the upkeep for all of this type of stuff, or is that more of a secret and they just kind of like write it off as some weird hobby? There's all kinds of things that you can explore with this. I said this, I think, on a different video, but if your superhero character is like a 13 year old kid, it might be a little implausible to uh, give them a base that is an underground, high tech, cutting edge lab that's accessible only by, you know, um, retinal scanner or something like that. Yeah, it's possible, and especially if they're really rich or if they come across the base by other means, but they're not going to be able to pay for that base uh, with their allowance. This might be a good way to kind of find a balance and give a little bit of realism to your base design while also finding some kind of middle ground regularity to the base. But of course you can do what you want to do, be creative how you want to be creative. So if you come up with a really cool design that doesn't totally make sense, go with it. The last step is number five, which is application. So considering everything that we've talked about so far, what the aim of the base is, what the different areas are, uh, who has access, and what are the different actions going on and in and about um, taking care of this base and using it for its intended purpose, 
what is the application of all of these things on your character's life and on the story in general? What effect might your character's own personality or their habits might have on the base? For example, like if they're not exactly very tidy with their things, if they're the type of organization style that just leave it all over the place and I know where everything is, then what does that look like in the secret base? It, it, do they clean it up all the time? Do they reorganize stuff? Or is everything meticulously kept in different drawers and rooms and servers and cabinets and things like that? Do they have their own personal touches like photos of family members or uh, merchandise from their favorite bands posted on the walls or around their workspace? Did your character work hard all of their life to save up the money to create this space and so they like try and take care of it like as well as they possibly can? Or are they like really into puzzles and so they just use puzzles in every different access point even the toilet and you just have to figure out a puzzle to use every single thing that's going on? Did they DIY this place together and it's just kind of like haphazardly held together with duct tape? Or is it something that they have like unlimited income and they can just keep pouring their income into, you know, the base and keep it up and keep making it better and better all the time? All of these things can have an effect on the base, the use of the base, and the changes over time in the use of the base that can affect your story and really produce some really cool scenes and uh, fun character interactions that you wouldn't get if you hadn't considered all of these things together. Most importantly, however, you want to make sure that you're having fun while designing the secret base slash headquarters because when you have fun designing it, when you make it a fun place to be where you might enjoy going and hanging out, then your characters will probably enjoy hanging out there as well. And then in turn, your audience will enjoy seeing your characters playing out their stories in this setting. Plus, if you've given your base design this much thought already, enough to have watched uh, almost a whole video on base design to make sure that you're getting everything thought out, then you're really probably going to produce something that's really cool and interesting for the audience. And there you have it. There is my five-step process to creating a headquarters for your supervillain or superhero. Thank you so much for watching, super friends. If you enjoyed this video or you found it helpful, go ahead and give us a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more video content like this and if you want to participate in our new community collaboration. Check out my previous video to see the details about that. And if you want to see my own superheroes in action, then you can go to our website at www.fearless9.com and check out the books that I've written and see how I kind of do this thing. Thanks again for watching, Super Friends, and we'll see you next time.